Welcome back to another episode of Informed Voter. I'm Shauna Vaughn, and today I am at the Lake County Supervisor of Elections Building with Mr. Alan Hayes, who's going to give us a tour of this wonderful facility today. Welcome, Shauna. Thanks for coming by. Thanks so much for we, having uh, me. I'm Alan Hayes, of course, the Supervisor of Elections here in Lake County. And Great to meet you, sir. Thank you. We, <laughs> we welcome this opportunity to show you and all of your viewers uh, what goes on here in your Lake County Elections Office? We're putting a great emphasis on accuracy and security and confidence. We want the voters to know what's going on here. We want them to be confident that every vote is accurately counted and that all of our systems are completely secure. So uh, why don't we take a tour? Um, we do this same tour for anybody who signs up for it on Tuesdays or Thursdays. They're welcome to go to our website and uh, they can find sign up for a tour there. Uh, we're happy to, to show them around and uh, we'll show you today. I love that. Let's do it. All right. Thank you. Well, good morning. Thank all of you for coming for our tour. Uh, it's, I'm Alan Hayes, the Supervisor for Elections here in Lake County. It's my privilege to have been in this position for the last seven years and uh, we love what we do and we're happy to show it off to you so you can have a better understanding of what we do and how we do it and how secure your elections are and how transparent we are as well. We want your voter confidence to be at a very high level through the entire time. Here is where your voting experience actually begins. This is the registration area. You fill out your voter registration application and either online or in person. You bring it in, you mail it in, or you may register at the Department of Motor Vehicles. And then these ladies get that data. We do what we need to do. Then we send it on to Tallahassee where they verify the citizenship of each of the applicants and then they send that information back to us if everything is in order. If not, we contact the voters, let them know that something else is uh, incomplete in the process and then they of course act on that. Eventually, you officially become registered to vote and uh, these ladies here are the ones that take care of all that. And then we have about 800 election workers that have volunteered to help us. They are paid positions but these 800 have to go through training for every single election. You can't train them once at the beginning of the year. You have to train them for each individual election. Let's take a walk down to the training room and see what goes on there, okay? Good. Here we are in the training room, set up as a classroom, of course. These are our electronic poll books and the, each worker that's gonna be operating these and the clerks, assistant clerks, are the ones that are trained on these machines. We have five different positions. We have a clerk, an assistant clerk, an inspector, a technician, and a poll deputy. Um, and each one of them have to go through their individual training for each of the things. We always show them our four points of commitment, recognizing that the performance of the election is solely dependent on our preparation and their implementation of everything that we've prepared for them. But voter confidence is our number one commitment, excellent service, accurate and efficient elections, and then responsible financial stewardship. We want to protect jealously the taxpayer dollars as if they were our own money and uh, spend them wisely. But we certainly want to provide excellent service for everyone. As you can imagine, with the different positions needing different types of training, we have to reconfigure the room. It's very flexible. We can set it up and uh, the, the voters really appreciate well-trained staff and we've been blessed with some tremendous tremendous election workers that are really dedicated to serving the people in an efficient and accurate manner and uh, we could not do it without them we give them huge kudos every chance we get because they're the ones that actually make it happen okay now let's go back through the warehouse we'll look there and you will see the overwhelming moving parts that have to come together We've got a great team that bring all of these supplies together and transport them and set up all the polling places. And it becomes quite an operation. So let's go out this door right here. Well, here we are in the warehouse. You can see behind you are all the supply carts, or at least some of them that go to the specific voting places. We have the privacy booths on top. Inside, we have the electronic poll uh, books and the ballots are transported in there. All of these carts are uh, sealed and locked with numbered seals so that we know what that number was when they leave here 
when the clerk opens it up at the polling place, they verify that that seal is unbroken and that it is the same numbered seal that was on there when it left here. Our chain of custody is, is very detailed throughout our entire operation. Uh, we're determined to make sure that our security is job number one. And uh, thus we're able to, to keep a very tight rein on everything. We try to make everything as efficient as we can, uh, transporting different supplies and signs and things like that. But let's go on down here and look at some of the tabulation machines. These machines are plugged in all the time. They're not energized all the time. We have to charge the batteries once a quarter, but we want to make sure that if we have a power failure at the polling place, the machine has a battery backup in it and it continue working. These are brand new tabulation machines. The first time they were used was uh, this year in the presidential preference primary and they're state of the art, secure as can be, and uh, are never ever connected to the internet. There is no connection of our tabulation machines anywhere uh, with the internet. But you can see the, the uh, labels, each of the specific polling places. And for every election, each tabulation machine is programmed specifically for that one election and specifically at that location. So you can't take ballots from a Mount Dora location and expect them to be read by a tabulation machine in Claremont. It just doesn't work that way. You must put the ballots in that tabulation machine for that specific location. Is there anything or what might be unique about how we do things in Lake County with these machines and this process compared to elsewhere? Are you aware of that? Or is this like a statewide standard, would you say? Glad that you asked because there is a statewide law that says we're allowed to use tabulation machines only after they've been certified by the Bureau of Standards at the Division of Elections. There are only two companies whose machines have earned that certification. We happen to use es and &S machines, which are the, the premier uh, machine in the U.S. And uh, we like them very much. We get excellent service from the company. The, the machines perform superbly well on election day. And uh, we are quite pleased with those machines. But they have to be certified by the Division of Elections. And is that a state or federal governing? Body. It's state. It's state. Mm -hmm. Okay, sure so is. it's all kept within the state. Yes. Excellent. Yes. Yeah. Um, my other question was, you know, there are questions and concerns, I would think, typically these days, especially by voters, about um, the reliability of the machines. I know you mentioned that there are fail-safes and backup plans. Is there anything else that you can say about that to reassure folks that the machines are reliable? And Yes, and, and I was going to talk about that toward the end of the election. All right, I got ahead of you, let's well, go. No, that's quite all right. That's quite all right, Shauna, because we have we have an, another scanning system that we use to audit the entire election instead of choosing just one uh, contest in two or three precincts, okay. as we did in the old days, where we hand counted the ballots in those precincts for that particular contest as our audit. We now have another scanning system that's called Clear Ballot, and it's been certified by the state to be used as an automated audit machine. And it gives us a complete analysis and comparison of our tabulation system and the audit system head to head with uh, each of the votes. And you'll be quite pleased with the reliability and the accuracy Excellent. of our tabulation system. So I think my final question here is, um, do the mail-in ballots go into a machine like this one? And how does that process? No ma'am, because we'd be here forever. Right. Feeding them through mm -hmm. one at a time. We have some high-speed tabulation machines in the other room. I'd be happy to show those to you. Okay. And uh, they, those machines will read at 18,000 ballots per hour. Wow. It looks like a continuous ribbon of paper going okay. through the machine. We'll run some of them for you just so you can see. But you great. have to look quick. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let me talk about the early voting. You know, we have 10 days of early voting prior to the election. Early voting allows the voters, no matter where they live in the county, to go to one of those 12 sites and vote with their uh, correct ballot at that. We never leave voted ballots in a, a polling place overnight. Every day at the close of the early voting at 6 p.m., we package those ballots, bring them back here with a two-person courier. Uh, we never transport ballots with only one person. We make sure there's two people transporting the ballots, bring them in here. They have a chain of custody sheet, the log sheet that they fill out there and it comes here and we log them in here and all this sort of thing. And then we store them. I'm going to walk you over to where we store them, show you how secure everything is there. And uh, then we'll go into the vote by mail department, 
show you what's going on there. Or right? when they're transported, are they transported in these same? No, no, these, or... these roll out and are left. They're actually, these are the election day supply carts. The early okay. voting carts are much bigger and, and don't have the pretty glass on the front. Okay. <laughs> These are the clerk binders. Every precinct clerk has a binder and you can see the information, the thickness, mm -hmm. and none of that is blank paper. <laughs> lots and lots of documentation that we go through. Uh, it, one could classify it as exhaustive documentation, but there's no good reason to take a shortcut in your security and in the records of the custody of these ballots. It, it's a real treasure that we take very, very seriously. This is the box that we use to transport those ballots from the early voting place back here. You can see on the bottom is a tamper evidence seal. You can see on the top are two tamper evidence seals. And then we have this tag right here that has the serial number of the tabulation machine. We know the quantity of the ballots that were in here. We know who put them in and what location. Very detailed information here. These boxes are brought back here and stored here under lock and key and camera surveillance through the end of the election. So again, making sure that security is top job. Excellent. Good illustration. You can't just get through some of these doors. There are three areas that you have to have a second level of security. We call it multi-factor authentication. And only authorized people are given that luxury of, of getting into certain spaces. The built by mail department, the tabulation room, and the canvassing board room or the three rooms. So what I just did there was I hit it with my little pass key and tried to open the door, but it didn't open because I didn't put my multi-factor authentication in. Nice. So again, it's uh, security is top drawer. Stay tuned for more of this detailed and unprecedented access to the Lake County Supervisor of Elections.